All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 211 Governance and Risk Committee here at MakerDAO. My name is Peyton. I am one of the governance facilitators, joined by a boss, bunch of awesome maker participants, uh, people who are interested in contributing to the ecosystem. Uh, as we get started here, uh, if you go ahead and take us to the next slide, David, going to kick us off with some rules. Uh, this may be your first time joining, maybe your long time uh, caller. Either way, we're happy you're here. This is our weekly call where we all get to talk about community, governance, risk, and all the things that are going on in MakerDAO. So let's try not to talk over each other. Uh, if you can, pop on those cameras. It's always nice to see faces. Uh, we do have a raise hand function. Uh, you can also drop questions and comments in the chat. Uh, as a reminder, when you first hop on the mic and you can introduce yourself, that's always helpful. And uh, finally, it is an open meeting, so do feel free to ask questions, drop comments, and uh, weigh in on the things we're talking about. Cool. Well, let's go to the next slide, I believe. Uh, yeah, one more thing. Just DBAA, and we'll all get along. Well, thanks, David. Uh, next one. Slide agenda to get through today. We'll start, as usual, with our governance roundup. Uh, today, we'll just talk about the votes and the MIPS. Uh, Artem is away at sea and has dropped us a video loom that you can check out later at your convenience. We'll get into an initiative update from JokeDAO. Uh, and finally, a more guided discussion on MIP81, the uh, Coinbase USDC institutional rewards. So without further ado, let's hop into it. All right, on the boat front, fairly quiet week. I uh, decided to combine everything in one slide. We can run through pretty quickly. Uh, we did have an open market committee proposal pass with a couple of exchanges. We also approved a Velodrum uh, multi-sig for managing the voting rewards there. Uh, so look for updates on those uh, here soon. There is one ongoing green light poll. Voting ends on Monday, uh, a week from Monday. So you do have some time to get in there. Uh, and leave your opinion on Anchorage uh, lending in crypto. For the executive votes, uh, we did have an executive posted yesterday that has already passed. Uh, it does, however, have office hours on, so it won't be able to execute until Monday. That uh, contains the Monetalis onboarding, some core unit MKR transfer and, and streams, as well as the funding uh, for the ambassador program. Looking ahead to next Wednesday, uh, we do have a number of things on that executive plan, including a big list of collateral auction parameters uh, from the other week's poll those changes I just mentioned uh, to the rates, as well as recognized delegate compensation. All right, that's enough for me for now. I'm going to hand the mic over to Gallup to give us an update on the MIPS. Hello, um, this is Gala from Vavalpa. I have a sore throat, so bear with me. Um, so the formal submission window for October governance cycle closed yesterday. We have a total of 16 proposals that were formally submitted that will result in a total of nine ratification polls. Next, uh, we have, um, so these formal submissions for the end game uh, related proposals, um, all of these eight proposals. So that is MIP 83, recognize launch meta DAO clusters, uh, MIP 84, activate protocol owned vault emulation, MIP 4 C4 subproposal one, MIP removal subproposal, MIP 4 C2 sub proposal 27, um, MIP 16 amendment, then MIP 1 C4 sub proposal 1, change in the problem space, and the three core unit mandate changes uh, for collateral engineering services, risk, and strategic finance core units. So this will all be bundled uh, into a single ratification poll. And for the three core unit offboardings uh, for events, real world finance, and strategic happiness core units. Um, there, the three of them will be put up to vote in three ratification polls. So next we have the standalone MIPS and others. First MIP 81, Coinbase USDC institutional rewards, which will transfer one third of the PSM's USDC into Coinbase custody to earn rewards. As Pros mentioned, um, this will be one of the discussion topics for this call. Then we have um, MIP82, Monetas Coinbase Appaloosa, one um, facilitator of boarding sub proposal for the real world finance facilitator. 
However, uh, the end game plan of boarding off the real world uh, finance core unit has precedence over this proposal if both of them pass. Next, we, there's a special purpose fund to fund legal domain work to onboard Black Tower credit. And last, an amendment to modify the facilitator of boarding process. This was all for the October formal submissions. Uh, all nine ratification polls will go on chain next Monday. Um, so now we can move on to the proposals in RFC. We are not including proposals that, that have been inactive for a while. For that, you can go take a look at the RFC category in the forum. Um, so for the standalone MIPS in RFC, we have MIP 80, MKR Compensation Guide, whose author has decided to extend the feedback period. MIP 86, CoinShares USDC Institutional Rewards, which aims to establish a collaboration between CoinShares and Maker, whereby CoinShares will manage about 13% of the PSM's USDC and invest it. And the recently posted MIP 87, OUSD Decentralized Rewards, which aims to enable MakerDAO to deploy up to 33% of the PSM's USDC into original dollar to earn constant daily yield without going through a centralized service or giving up custody of the funds. Next, we have um, four core unit budgets that have recently been post posted. So there is um, development of this core unit, GovComs, Immunify Security, Size Stream Auction Services, um, core units. Uh, very, um, core unit facilitators, please uh, rem remember, note that the submission window for new budgets will close next Wednesday, end of day, that's uh, October the 12th. And if formally submitted, they will enter the November governance cycle. Uh, we also have one core unit mandate subproposal from the Immunified Security Core Unit, modifying their, um, their, their mandate. And finally, we have our weekly cycle subproposals. Uh, it's the special purpose fund for 50,000 um, die to pioneer a defined native database for modeling sentiment driven dynamics and risks. The author is still curating this proposal. So once it stays unmodified for seven days, it will be eligible to enter a weekly cycle. So finally, for the important dates, um, please remember that well, ratification polls uh, will go up um, on chain next Monday, October 10th. And uh, for new proposals um, to enter the November governance cycle, they must be posted by October 12th uh, in the forum. So that's it for MIPS. Thank you very much. Um, yes, that's Wednesday, Rose. Thanks, Kala. I appreciate you powering through there, both of our MIP under editors slightly under the water today. Uh, mm -hmm. I would love to pass the mic over to David to tell you a little bit about uh, this week's format of glance update, if you're there, David. Uh, yeah, I'm here. Uh, so I'm not going to do the update. I am just going to post the link to a pre recorded video. It's about eight minutes long, about uh, just about as long as the usual update. And so we're going to skip it and save everybody some time. And so if you would like to check it out, just watch the video. Back to you, pros. Thanks, David. It's a nice little update from Artem, who's away at sea right now as well. So a little care to watch it, I suppose. Awesome. Taking us on, I believe that'll bring us to our initiative updates. And we have one today uh, that's going to be talking about JokeDAO. I know I have a couple of recognized delegates who are behind us, uh, Tim and uh, Raphael. If you guys want to take the mic away, feel free. Thank you, Peyton. Amazing. Um, yeah, JokeDAO, we are at it again. So I think we, we should it a couple of times. So this time we want to bring some positive energy, some optimism into Endgame Plan. Um, Tim was already gracious enough to do these RFC EBCs where we kind of took the plan apart and said like, hey, what can go wrong? What needs improvement? What don't we understand? And now we want to use the opposite angle and just ask well, what's exciting about it? Like what, what can go right? Like what can happen? How can, can it improve the status quo of Maker? And we want to do that on chain with JokeDAO. And um, David Phelps has been extremely supportive and made an airdrop 
thanks to the Hernando GF GitHub repo, where we dropped every holder of one MKR, including addresses that delegated these MKR, um, so that you now have, if you hold one MKR, you now have 100 makeup pulse tokens. And you can submit, uh, and yeah, delegates have that are included too. Thanks, Tim. That's, that's a great point. And you can submit a proposal for what's exciting and then vote or downvote. And um, just try it out. It's fun. Uh, it's on Polygon. Um, if you need like half a matic, send me a DM. I'll send you half a matic. No questions asked. <laughs> no need to pay it back. Um, and then, uh, yeah, have at it, please. Uh, we would love to see some more participation. The reason we keep shipping that, I mean, I think that's probably important, is that I think we're, we're all kind of used to a certain way of, of governance in Maker. Uh, and I think this mode of governance works extremely well for a couple of issues, but it's it's kind of an ecosystem of thinking. And by changing that paradigm, we we believe that that this gives room for new ideas to grow. So please bear with us in these experiments because I think there's a lot of value we can get, generate there. And maybe Tim can speak a little bit about the, the possibilities that are in store if we choose to accept that. Um, just from my personal perspective, for me, it has really uh, changed the way I think about governance. And other DAOs like Bankless are already using it um, to, to serve as priorities and use it in their actual governance system. So, so please, Tim, maybe you can, can give us a little bit of a, um, an insight into the future of what this can help. Yeah, sure. So I think um, it, at the end of the day, it's important to frame it as just another useful governance tool. Um, and if you put that in the context of Maker, our governance tools are um, in need of a refresh or something that can move a little quicker, especially something that has on-chain uh, measurement. Um, I think the dream for Joke DAO or the ideal implementation would be that it's something we can use in addition to RFC. Um, but as, I mean, as everyone on this call or anybody who's checking out the link is seeing, the, the possibilities are kind of open because there's these extended periods of submitting and then voting, plus the other mechanics of what you can do. So. We can run pulse checks on a weekly basis. We can have um, different rules for what thing wins. Uh, so we can change consensus models. Uh, we can distribute tokens for every type of uh, thing we can think of under the sun. Um, you know, they're, they're not essentially meant to have a monetary value. They're more for using the on-chain data, right? So um, we can play with the, <laughs> I don't know if anybody remembers the breaker BKR token, um, but there's all sorts of, uh, interesting ways we could airdrop things and do different contests. Um, keep one thing open for ever. Um, we could work with the Joke DAO Council to mint NFTs for certain things that win um, contests, which then could be incorporated as governance processes. Um, you know, obviously these are all just different ideas that are good to experiment with. I think once the sort of current voting environment calms down over the next month uh, and the you know. The world changes in November and we all start to like slow down. I think that's the time to really think through the possibilities of where it's at, but it shouldn't just be joked out as the only tool. There's like other consensus models that we need to start to experiment with, I think. Um, so I think that summarizes most of it. We welcome any questions. Um, and I would love to see at least one or two more things pop up on there by the end of this call, because I know with all the screens turned off, people are probably not paying attention. Sorry, not sorry. I'm paying attention. Don't worry. Not you, David. <laughs> you fixed him. And uh, yeah, it is kind of by default Polygon, but uh, reading some of the comments here, worth noting it's any EVM chain that uh, that their software is compatible with. So even if you're not a super fan of Polygon, there's, there's endless op opportunities there. Yeah, and they also use this partner called Coinbase, Coinbase I think for minting and distributing tokens that also has really interesting um, features. Uh, you could use it to say, um, if someone is holding another token, this is how we did it for MKR, but it could also be an NFT. So you could airdrop it to everybody who's ever owned like any NFT that you like um, to sort of incentivize them to come in. 
um, or if we notice that a lot of MKR whales are also involved in these other communities, you could airdrop it to that community and see what happens. Um, synthetics comes to mind. Um, so yeah, lots of possibilities. And I'll give one more moment for any questions or additional comments. Well, uh, this is really exciting. It takes moments to submit, so I would encourage people to, to go forth and uh, take a stab. Thanks for hopping on, uh, Tim and Raphael, two of our recognized delegates. All right, uh, let's get into the discussion segment. We are trying uh, something a little different today, so I hope uh, we'll uh, get plenty of participation and, and uh, welcome to feedback and all sorts of other things for making this call better. Uh, but kind of wanted to start out today talking about RIP81, that's the Coinbase USDC Institutional Awards. Uh, we're going to kick it off, uh, if you take me to the next slide, David, uh, by asking the core units, okay, if voters pass this in, like, what are you going to do, right? A, a big factor for determining governance is saying, uh, all right, well, what does this bill or what does this proposal change? Um, so I thought it would be really great to hear from some of the core units who, who volunteered and maybe others later, um, uh, how they would respond if, if in two and a half weeks, I guess it is, uh, this MIP-81 is passed. You take the next slide. Here it's only fair that GovAlpha starts out here, <laughs> given all those, kind of our idea to talk about this discussion. And um, yeah, I think a lot of people may not always know exactly what GovAlpha is doing in the background. So I figured I'd take a moment to use this myth and, and showcase that. Uh, quite simply, it's, yeah, font color. I tried every color, David, <laughs> it's the green, but uh, we'll, we'll deal with it for now. Uh, it's it's all about coordination, right? Like uh, basically our job is kind of an administrative function within the DAO. So if this myth passes one of the things it's specifically uh, asked of Gov Alpha, uh, or at least of, of maker governance, uh, is that a signal request is put forward to onboard uh, entity that uh, Coinbase could the KYC um, in order to kind of facilitate and, and make sure this transaction could could happen. Um, so the MIP specifies that would either be coming from strategic finance, CES, or growth. So our job as Gov Alpha is to kind of reach out if this were to pass and say, all right, guys, uh, what are we thinking for an entity? Here's some of the things you'd want to consider putting in the proposal. Uh, to make it good for, um, you know, kind of everyone who who, who uh, might be voting on it later. Uh, our job is is often to help clarify, to help make sure that um, when proposals are coming forward, they're as clear as they can be, uh, and as many of the contingencies or uh, unthought of consequences are are fleshed out within it. Uh, after that happens, assuming we had an entity, we proceed with coordination for executive onboarding, right? Uh, ultimately, uh, a bunch of uh, USDC would, would need to be passed. Uh, and the only way to do that is with an executive spell. So uh, coordinating that technical work that involves talking with PECS, uh, planning an executive spell and getting it listed. Um, we're, you know, within executive spell processing, yes, we write the copy, but we also uh, push forward GitHub pull requests that actually make sure your your vote appears on Tux's portal. Um, so our job is very much at the center of the coordination. Uh, and if this MIP passes, we'll be kind of uh, checking in and, and pushing the steps along uh, to make sure that the maker voters would eventually have a chance to, to put this forward. Um, so I think that's a pretty good overview for what GovAlpha does. Uh, didn't want to take too long here. Uh, and there are several other core units mentioned by uh, this myth that I'd love to hear from. Uh, I see we got some questions from uh, from the chat already, which is awesome. Uh, I will go ahead and kind of save those for the end uh, because we do have a big discussion segment planned, uh, but do keep them coming in in chat. Quick refresh on the slides here. 
All right, next I would like to call on the strategic finance who's mentioned uh, heavily in this map. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ben, for the introduction and the beautiful slide. <laughs> um, uh, in terms of what uh, SF will do should the MIP pass, um, uh, as it's written in the text of the MIP, uh, we are to seek approval for a specific legal entity, uh, i.e. Uh, an arranger. And uh, this is basically um, you know, working with um, you know, uh, Monitalis or, or uh, Block Tower, who's been recently greenlit as a ranger uh, to help uh, facilitate the uh, creation. Oh, looks like I might have muted him up. Oh, shit. I don't know how that happened. Um, so I don't know where I left off, but uh, essentially, uh, what we're going to be doing is, um, you know, helping uh, facilitate a, um, you know, a an appropriate legal entity that can help, um, you know, onboard with Coinbase and basically serve as a ranger. Now, uh, from my perspective, you know, this is a DAO; it's permissionless. Anyone can, you know, uh, propose themselves as an arranger and be onboarded as an arranger. Um, but uh, I think the kind of price that um, have done so already and have kind of gone through the legal um, uh, in, you know, research to do it in a decentralized way. Uh, Montalas and Blocktar are probably the most appropriate at this moment in time. Um, but um, um, yeah, uh, this uh, what Coinbase has mentioned in the MIP is to structure it quite similarly to MIP 65, where um, you know basically the maker governments will still have control over the um, the funds and the uh, access to the funds. So um, you know, we're going to help uh, you know, facilitate this happening through a, uh, um, a single signal request or should this go away, uh, another uh, method uh, approved by governance. So I think that's the only thing that's really mentioned for us in the MIP. Awesome. Well, yeah, I can appreciate you sharing well what you would have to do if this passes. Uh, no I'll we'll keep it rolling with the CEUs then. Uh, like I said, if you do have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat so you don't forget, and we'll get to them in our discussion segment. All right, next up, I believe I have CES, uh, Lucky Irish, if you want to take the mic. Hey, Peyton, thanks. Uh, thanks for the slide. Um, so yeah, as part of MIP 81, there's a call out to do a uh, verification of the technical appropriateness of the MIP 81 designed designated solution. And, and so this, there's been some conversation, I posted some things around this, and this effectively is about a choice that we as a community need to make. And on one hand, we believe that there, there's a potential for a trustless, more trustless option to be able to do, to work with in this uh, the technical implementation. And then on the other hand, there is the more manual way, which is going to be more dependent upon an entity. And so our preference uh, at this moment is to look at the trustless way, considering um, and, and and based upon primarily the feedback that we're seeing in the community and some of the concerns that are being raised. So um, that would be my signal at this moment if, if this MIP was passed. And um, I started with that, but I would like to also um, make more of a public service announcement because I think this is a, a great example, plus some of the other current collateral oriented MIPs that are coming through the system and for those of you who don't don't have the history, is that we had a situation more toward the beginning of the year with these self-contained MIPS to try to overcome some issues that we were having with the collateral onboarding process, and we effectively got to a point where I think we we got our hands around that, and resolved it, and the system was moving pretty pretty well. Uh, a lot of it had to do with blocking and timing, and I think we got over those issues. So now we've had a resurgence of, of more what I'll call self-contained collateral MIPs. And just by nature of what a MIP is, 
Um, sure, anyone in the community can propose anything at any time. Absolutely, that will work. But when you're requesting resources from core units and other members of MakerDAO, there's a level of uh, due diligence um, that's really required. And I did post more of a general comment on the origin USD post as as some some background and, and guidelines. But effectively, is is that um, I would highly encourage any of these MIPS to take a look at some of the past work that we've done in the way of the questions that we've answered and you know the the details around the deal and the legal and the regulatory structure and the technical implementation. So, for example. If you haven't talked with our group about a technical implementation, your MIP is incomplete. It's just that clear. And so I'd highly encourage, not, I can't force anyone to do anything, but it's highly encouraged that before you put a MIP out there, talk and gain consensus and agreement of the individual core units that you're requesting work from, and then place it out there. Because what I'm seeing right now, these are more of ideas that need a lot of work before they become an actual proposal. So I just wanted to use a segue to, to reinforce some things that we've already learned, that there are some processes that can help out any additional collateral applicants that are using MIPS, and please reach out. We're here to help. Thanks, Peyton. Yeah, thanks, Robert, uh, facilitators. Yes, um, yeah, I, I really appreciate you highlighting that. That's a lot of times, when a myth is passed, then it may not be super visible what has to take place. And particularly if um, the, uh, you know, particularly if, if people aren't consulted in terms of who's actually doing the work, uh, it can be quite hard to know exactly how long someone will take uh, to even get done. So I know when people reach out to us in governance, that's always our first recommendation is get in touch with the CU that the most uh, closely matches what you're proposing. All right, uh, we'll keep, keep clicking through CUs here. I uh, appreciate you taking the time to Robert. Uh, next up, I believe, yeah, growth. Uh, Nadia, if you want to hop on the mic. Yeah, thanks, Peyton. Um, well, uh, what we do is a little bit different because, uh, like, for us, it, the all, all they like the, the the main thing to do here is to find the partner, like to find the opportunity. So once it is approved, it is more uh, in the hands of CES, protocol engineering, strategic finance, and, and, and other core units, perhaps. Uh, what we will do, of course, and as we do with everything that happens inside, inside Maker, is prepare an announcement, uh, talk with the partner and the people at Maker that help to onboard or like to make that that thing happen in order to work on a pr and uh, try to uh try to uh have the need, have the announcement everywhere so that's that's mainly what we do in terms of what uh, what what will happen once this is approved but our focus as i said is in to find more of these opportunities and uh, for me it is important to remind delegates and the maker community that try to look at these deals not by unique deals but uh, try to look at us if they are part of a solution so we have all of this idle capital what can we do with it and the strategic finance has presented a very good framework on how we can take advantage of that idle capital and increase revenues for maker I think we are viewing all the uh, opportunities that uh, are appearing in the forum. And uh, it is it is very interesting for us because some of these opportunities, of course, uh, have been because we have been working with a partner, trying to explain to them the advantages to do something like that. But also, and, and this is the more interesting part for me, is that other, um, you can like you, I've been finding in the forum other proposals of projects that we have never talked about about that opportunity. So I think that is thanks to like all the noise that we do in our Twitter uh, with the agency, the PR agency, and through the announcements, 
every time we approve one proposal like this one or every time we onboard something like this so that that is what we do in growth and uh, and uh, yeah like we will continue working with other core units to bring more of these opportunities uh, to the maker community and and something that i i also have liked a lot is that um i think the community is helping us to do the term determine the risk of these deals i i really appreciate all the questions that you have been asking to the partner because at the beginning like maybe we don't see like all the different dimensions of of of, of okay so if we onboard them what will happen to maker maybe we we don't see all the implications of it but thanks to the community and your feedback we are able like to uh, build a stronger case. So that's that's awesome. Right on. Uh, thanks, Nadia. Appreciate you. Let us know uh, kind of how you approach that and, and how the community can help. Uh, so we did have one more volunteer. I know Paros said he probably wouldn't be able to make it. Um, I do see a couple other people from risk, uh, though. I wasn't sure if you wanted to say anything. Uh, no pressure if not. Well, I'll, I'll relay, I guess, some of the uh, kind of what Pramesh said. They said, like, you know, largely this in, in terms of what can be considered real world asset deals aren't necessarily their purview. However, there is like custody risk to consider, and, and it definitely plays into part of their models. Um, so, this is something they'll be watching and, and monitoring. And while they may not have like a direct mandate to uh, take on anything as part of the deal, um, it does affect uh, what, what the team does in terms of how, how they model. Uh, risk for the protocol. Cool. Um, if you take us to the next slide, David, uh, those were all my volunteers. Uh, I asked all the mandated actors, like, hey, this, as a core unit, if this passes, like, what will you guys have to do? Um, I will give one more shout if, if core units, if there is anything you think you'd like to do uh, if the submit passes and use this opportunity to educate the community on, on kind of what you do. In regards to governance. Now would be a great time to do so. All right, well, you know, at least a quarter of the workforce will have something to do here. Cool. Before we get into our structured uh, discussion segment, uh, I did kind of want to do an energizer here. Um, so this will be a slight break from the crypto talk. Uh, hopefully uh, this will be a good time to come back to the screen, engage a little bit. Uh, we're going to do kind of a, a fun exercise. Yeah, you're spot on, Kat. Uh, kind of borrowing from the improv uh, culture of yes and uh, we're going to take a sentence uh, we're going to add yes and to it basically accepting all of the uh, kooky ideas that come before you uh, and and see where we can go uh, so the format is pretty simple you'll say yes and a, a few items to to add to this um, we'll try not to talk over each other but uh, it's not all in good faith if we do uh, the goal is here to practice improvisation collaboration uh, and it's getting to have a little fun in the middle of the call. Cool. So uh, for our little prompt, uh, we're going to go with something perhaps optical and say, uh, I'm going to Columbia. So our starting point for uh, this little improv is I'm going to Columbia. And I'm going to call on Gala to be my second and give an example on how we can build on that. And then I'll turn it over to the audience. Um, yes, and we will. And we'll... Uh, we'll eat arepas every day. Yes, and while we eat, we're going to uh, enjoy each other's company. And while we do that, we also have a nice carpet India.
when we yes. get full on up. Yes, and this time it will actually remember the sunscreen. And after a nice uh, sunbathing, we'll take a long nap. Yes, and we'll meet wonderful people. Yes, and we'll talk a lot about the end game. Yes, and th this will bring us into the best parties in town, I guess. Yes, and we'll celebrate with our wonderful MakerDAO contributors. Yes, and we'll watch Frank shake his booty at Divinity. Yes, I will definitely do the lambada and the bachata and the salsa and the cumbia, whatever the DJ plays. Yes, and some people will get hats and swag from Andrew Bourbon. Yes, and paper will go to college too. Yes, and I really have severe FOMO for not being able to go there, actually. Super sad about that. Right on. Well, uh, we don't need to get to too much crazier than that, but I appreciate the, so many voices and taking a little break from our uh, planned call to activate and, and energize a little bit. Uh, if you'll take us to the next slide, David, uh, I'm hoping we can kind of carry that energy through. Uh, to a bit of a experiment in terms of uh, talking about these governance proposals a little more in depth. Uh, basically, kind of want to imply a, a light Roberts rules of order uh, to this call and, and start a speaking list for discussing uh, MIP81 and, and, and related uh, custody agreements too, right? There's been a number of ones on the forum. If, if uh, your point kind of ties into that, uh, I do think that's appropriate to bring up as well. Uh, so what we're going to do, I'm going to be building a speakers list and turning on a timer here. Hopefully Zoom will work uh, with the app I, I added a little earlier. And uh, anytime I call on someone, you're going to have two minutes to, to make your point, basically arguing, uh, asking questions, uh, bringing up whether you support this myth or uh, think we should oppose it. Uh, we'll kind of respect the two minutes there, make sure everyone can, can get their full thought out. You don't have to use the full time if you don't like to. Uh, the only thing I ask is if you want to come back for, for seconds on the speaker list, please do so. Uh, but before the third time, let's make sure everyone has had a chance to go. And yeah, we're going to try the structure to get a little deeper into the parts. Like uh, It's obviously nice if we can go point counterpoint, but since we have a speaker's list, that won't always be the case. Uh, if we have too many pro people in a row, I'll call out looking for a con. Uh, but other than that, I would just love to hear a lot of people, and particularly delegates and, and voters' thoughts on this. Uh, so practically, how this is going to have to happen is I'll open up the speakers list. Uh, the easiest way to get on it would be utilizing that raised hand function we talked about earlier. Uh, you can also just drop uh, your name in the chat. Uh, that, that would be easy for me to identify. And we'll get talking. Um, yeah, I've got some discussion questions to spare us on should we run out of speakers? Uh, but yeah, let's open the floor. Who would like to say something about uh, MIP81? Not to put you on the spot, paper, but I know you had a, a good question from earlier. If, uh, you wanted to bring that up. All right, I had to scroll quite a bit, but I did find it. Uh, paper asked uh, kind of earlier when we were first getting into this if there was any technical dark magic we could use to get around the custody downside. 
Uh, so you might be aware that uh, in order for the Coinbase rewards to function, we do have to physically send the USDC over. Uh, that's in contrast to some of the PSM proposals we've seen come in like from Gemini, uh, which offered to pay us based on uh, the GUSD in, in our PSM balance. Uh, so the question is, you know, is there any way we can kind of get around the, the risk of, of giving full custody over to Coinbase? Looks like Raph wants to get on the speaker's list if uh, I may be so bold to assume. I mean, Peyton, the, the, the most obvious answer for this one, I don't know if I'm following your format, so shut me down if I'm, if I'm not. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the most obvious uh, one that I can refer to, and if, if paper you're referring, if you're looking for something else is the, again, exploring the trustless option that, al that allows uh, Coinbase to custody a smart contract that has some special functions in it that allows us to claw it back if we need to. So, um, um, and so we've been working uh, with Coinbase and continue to do so to figure out if that's a, if that solution is a real solution before we say, yeah, let's, this is a real solution. And then therefore we're recommending this is the primary option for us. And, and again, that way, um, we're hoping that that could eliminate or reduce significantly some of the custody risks that the community has identified. So is if that's what you're looking for, there's a little bit more detail there. I don't have anything more beyond that. If you're looking for something else, I'm happy to answer any other questions you might have. Yeah, McGill has, a, has another uh, important point there too, because a trustless solution, uh, does require some development work and probably an audit um, and verification associated with it, where the more manual way is a quicker solution. But I think we've each identified, um, you know, in the forums and Discord and such, what the potential downfalls are of doing a manual solution. Awesome. Thanks for kicking us off there, Robert. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, the end of the uh, answer. I do see a hand from Raphael, so we'll get started uh, with our speakers list. Please raise your hand if uh, you'd like to go next. Um, <clears throat> so I think I have like for, for me the the smart contract solution seems amazing, but then like thinking about it, zooming out like from from their perspective they obviously would have some things to say about the nature of the smart contract, like what can be in there, how it can look, how it can't look, uh, what's allowed, what's not allowed. Um, they want their six minute delay to be honored for, for whatever reason. So I think developing that smart contract while I think it's ideal is probably something for the longer term because um, I think it's going to take a couple of months to get that like finished, right? Especially if they are not um, super keen on that, then they're just going to stall it. Like that's what I do. I'd say, yeah, cool. Mm. Maybe you deposit now and we'll work on that or it's taking forever. You know, I, I, I just stall it. So I'm not like, I like the solution. I think it's amazing. Um, I think in, in practice, when you look at Coinbase perspective, um, they have no reason to rush that. And um, that might actually take longer than we have guaranteed need on that. Thanks, Raphael. Seen, uh, some chat uh, on the sidebar there. Uh, Mark, did you want to come on the mic and maybe speak to someone? Uh, sure. Yeah, I've spoken with Coinbase I mean, from the you know get go. They know they were interested in a uh, permissionless and automated solution. 
uh, and they're willing to help us make that a reality. The, the challenge for that is going to be, I think, uh, more on the non-technical side, to be honest, where the DAO needs to decide what level of liquidity it wants uh, on on chain, right? And then based on that threshold, that'll kind of dictate how uh, funds are moved, how many, how much funds are moved back and forth between Coinbase and the DAO. Um, so, um, yeah, and then of course there's all the technical work and audits that have to go along with it. So, um, I think we're at a point where it makes more sense to start off manually to get you know, cash in the door and transition to that solution uh, once, once, once possible. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, Raphael, go for it. Sorry if I'm holding the mic here, but <clears throat> from Galvaro's perspective, have your concerns been um, addressed? Yeah, I don't know, Patrick, if you want to get some more voices in there, if you want to speak to that, if uh, you're around. Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so the answer is yes and, and no. So Gavalfa had concerns about the actual structure of the MIP itself. Initially, when it was first proposed, it, it, it was incomplete and wasn't fitting the MIP template. So those concerns, from our perspective, have been addressed. You know, we, we believe it is a complete MIP. Um, whether or not it's a good idea or not is, is a different question. And, you know, as per our neutrality mandate, we won't comment on that. Um, the question of uh, do we have any concerns from a governance perspective? Um, yes, we do. Uh, we still have concerns about the withdrawal of the funds specifically in, in, in the time frame that could be achieved in following makers' usual um, governance processes. Um, and, you know, certainly would it be, it would all depend on the um, arranger um, that's been onboarded and also the, um, the legal agreement in terms of what would constitute an instruction to the arranger. Did it, does it need to just be a governance poll, um, which can take three days? Does it need to be um, a, um, an executive vote, which would then take even to potentially take longer? Um, does it need to be, um, it, you know, can, we, can we insert a set of predefined criteria for the arranger so that they don't need to wait for governance to act? So if the USDC balance drops by X amount, withdraw the funds, you know, these kind of things that we could think about. Uh, so, there, yeah, there are still some concerns from the governance perspective, but um, from the point of view is, is it a legitimate MIP? Can it go on chain? Um, the answer is yes, and it will be going on chain next week. Thanks again, Patrick. Uh no, I sent out a message to the recognized delegates uh, yesterday, kind of giving them a heads up about uh, this conversation. I'm curious if we have any uh, any other delegates that, that might want to to speak about their opinion. Immediately get a hand from Frank. Yeah, take it away. Hey, Peyton. Como estás todo bien? Ojalá. Uh, all right. So yeah, 3F delegate. Uh, the platform is supportive of uh, BIP81. Uh, we like what uh, Gemini has proposed as well. So uh, we're hopeful and willing to um, to obviously green light some of this stuff, but we also are in favor of uh, automation, right? So we would love to see a trustless, um, a trustless environment here because I also feel like we're missing a lot of the stuff that we need to, to understand when it comes to custodial services. and. You know, that includes some of the risk management, uh, some of the risks associated with custody services, right? Such as transaction, transaction risk, compliant risk, the credit risk, all that good stuff, strategic risk. And, you know, earlier on, I know that you were asking risk to comment on, on MIP81, and fortunately they're not here, but we just had a delegate uh, office hours about, uh, about half an hour ago. And that was one of the things that we were discussing is like, wh where are, are the parameters that the risk team, the risk uh, core unit um, is um, is providing to the community. So we would like to see that. However, you know, as I stated earlier, and I know I got 45 seconds, we are proponents of MIP81. Uh, however, you know, we signed up to be in an automated environment. And so far I feel like 
And you might have seen me complain on Discord that, you know, we're still not even uh, in a decentralized forum. We're not in a decentralized Discord, right? So, uh, and then, you know, I'm just an individual who's complaining and I hate to complain because I know the devs are hard at work. But, uh, you know, the original vision of, of joining this ecosystem was to get stuff automated. So uh, I'm hopeful. I'll wait. I'll be patient. But, uh, yeah, time's running out. Thank you. Great use of two minutes there, Frank. Um, if you, oops, that's what happens when it goes all the way. Good to know. Um, if uh, you do want to hop on the speakers list again, do feel free to see you so. Uh, but I appreciate you sharing your perspective. There are other delegates or maybe core unit members. Uh, I know several of you got to kind of speak about what you uh, might have to do already, but there's several more core units and several more contributors uh, on the call. Are there other opinions or, or thoughts we'd like to share about this? That tends back with a feedback loop, so I'll see. Take it away. Um, I guess I have a stupid question, which is if the MIT fails, will they submit again? I don't have a direct answer there. I suspect so, uh, just based on what they said in, in, in calls and, and on the forum, right? They they are looking for a solution. And, and if there's a concrete reason why this isn't uh, the right solution, uh, I'm sure they'd be willing to, to try to figure one out. Uh, there's been kind of the meme of the, the PSM wars. Uh, I've rather enjoyed floating around on, on the Twitter sphere. Uh, and it seems kind of clear that uh, if makers willing to consider these, you know, there's a lot of people who are willing to turn on some incentives for, for us as a protocol. All right, my take away the restriction of, of the timer and the speaking list here. Uh, David, if you, uh, I know you have some good notes there, so I don't want to lose this. Uh, but if you'd uh, be able to take us to the next screen, I've got some like general stakeholder questions. Uh, so we tried to think of uh, a few different stakeholders that might be on this call. And uh, yeah, maybe these apply to you, maybe these spur your, your line of thought. Um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll just pop some open discussion. I know there's some questions here. I'll, I'll run through the chat and try to pull them out. But in the meantime, if any of these speak to you, uh, feel free to hop on the mic and, and start talking. Yeah, go for it, Justin. Thank you, Peyton. I'll um, answer the middle question uh, for the delegate stakeholders, and then that's, do I see a situation where the MakerDAO ends this agreement in the future? And I absolutely do. Um, this proposal asks for terrible big portion uh, of uh, of the PSM and uh, the payoffs um, in in a percentage uh, isn't all that great. So we have several things that would like to utilize the USDC we have in the PSM. We might go into a future where we don't really have that much USDC in the PSM or even have a PSM. In, uh, in either of those cases, I think it's prudent for us to end this agreement if it comes into fruition. Um, I think it it could be a nice baseline if we can actually manage the risks, but of obviously with such uh, such a huge portion of the USDC, we, we can't really accept uh, barely any risk at all uh, in this going forward, I think. Uh, but it would still only, I think, be a baseline versus other opportunities to, to earn um, money on our uh, balance sheet, which I think there will be more of, and I think they'd be more lucrative ones than the one presented here. And um, thanks for answering the uh, call there, uh, Justin, one of our recognized audience. Uh, I see uh, David from the uh, Collateral Engineering Services Core Unit. One day I'll be able to get that out smoothly. <laughs> I'm gonna take the mic, go for it. Yeah, um, I'm eating lunch, so I'm not gonna uh, show my screen, but... Um, just like to point out, like, um, uh, to the point about automation, that, it, you know, automation of the MIP, I don't think is an all or nothing. 
Um, it could potentially be done in phases, but you know, before we can even determine that, uh, we need to determine from Coinbase what their criteria are for custodying a smart contract, because that will determine what's doable. Um, uh, one of our team members, uh, uh, Nikolai, you know, suggested if they could custody a smart contract, it could be just as much uh, as taking our MIP21 output conduit as that smart contract. Um, and that would be a smart contract where the, uh, the only way the USDC can get out of that smart contract um, is by return to the PSA. Um, and, and then further automation could be done down the road. So um, I, I just like to point that out. I, I don't think it's, a, a, you know, uh, I think that we may be able to achieve some sort of uh, stepwise automation that addresses the risks that maker token holders are concerned about. David, that was uh, really helpful to hear. Uh, so noting a question from paper here before I move on to the hands asking, so voting on this, does it lock us into a schedule or implementation? It's just conceptual, right? Um, I don't know, uh, I might say like a level up from conceptual, right? Because <laughs> it is uh, kind of demanding, okay, if this is passed, like here's what's going to happen. Uh, it asks for uh, one of the core units mentioned to put forward a signal. Uh, picking on entity to, to push this forward. Um, but of course, that does give the chance for the entity to be rejected. Uh, we could be an entity that they aren't able to do business with as well. Like there's kind of several, I guess, roadblocks we'd have to get past uh, if this is voted in by maker holders. However, the intent is quite clear that uh, if this is passed, different core units will be will be doing things to to bring, uh, bring this up to fruition. Hopefully that's just question. I see uh, Raphael with his hand up. Take care. I just want to point out the the idea of Patrick of like auto signaling when the PSM reaches a certain level, and I think that's kind of an idea to work around it because it's just on our end. Like we can kind of say in their arranger agreement that one signal for the arranger to withdraw funds immediately is when the PSM reaches a certain level, and no further executive is required. And that's kind of a very neat um, workaround around this liquidity issues, I think. Thanks, Rafael. Scroll through the chat here, see if there's any questions I've overlooked. Uh, Feel free to help on the mic and sign up. So. That's a good point from David in the chat that uh, part of the implementation does re require some sign offs from, from Core yet. So that's a potential another blocking point. Um, paper kind of pointing out to some previous things that have been passed but not implemented. And I think that kind of ties into what uh, Robert was saying earlier, right? Um, you know, if you don't talk to, to a CU uh, and, and kind of expect it to happen, uh, well, then that kind of puts it on your shoulders to, to push forward. Um, you know, as far as the governance skin goes, if if we have something that's that's been approved by maker holders and is ready to be put into an executive, like we we ask it for it to be done. Um, so that's kind of the the cutoff there. Yeah, I see a hand from Frank. Take hey, so I like to take that community question. How do you view this opportunity for Maker DAO? And if another project like Avi uh, was doing the same thing, it's funny because. You know, I see a lot of the chatter in different Telegram groups and a lot of folks don't think that Maker Thou and Die is cool anymore, right? Like the slogan make die cool again is actually <laughs> a thing in my opinion, right? But I feel like if Abe was doing this, perhaps you wouldn't hear this, uh, the chatter on Telegram groups, uh, not that they matter, but, you know, I, I do value some of these folks who 
are in it day in and day out, right? Whether they're traitors, uh, anons that are degenerate or whatever you want to call them. But I think that, you know, regardless what folks are going to think, whether die is cool or is no longer cool, um, this is a huge opportunity for MakerDAO. I think it's going to develop a lot of the, um, uh, what's the word for it? A lot of the Kim Kardashian effect that she has whenever any kind of news is put out there, right? Like a positive uh, kind of spin to it. So, um, you know, shout out to my anons out there, my DJs who who think die is not cool anymore. But I actually think that regardless of what the small ecosystem thinks of die today, um, I think this is going to be this is going to be huge uh, if somehow we could get it done, right? Whether it's automated, uh, hopefully, uh, or the old fashioned way, which I rather not, but you know, uh, hopefully we'll get to that stage where we, you know most of these things could be automated. But yeah, so let's make die cool again and make her down. Right on, and thanks for grabbing one of those community questions. Uh, we could call back to take a look on the screen, whether it's uh, described you or or a different stakeholder. I think these are pretty great jumping off points. Uh, I guess I kind of got on to the lot maybe in the strategic finance or growth direction, no particular answer there, but uh, I like the question of like, what uh, what other opportunities might there be, right? Like at the very least, Maker seems to be uh, considering this and considering the Gemini proposal. Uh, so does this kind of open the door in, in your minds to pursuing other partnerships? Uh, I would say that the uh, Coinbase uh, MIP is a, it's a really big deal. And I think a lot of ways that people um, don't appreciate it yet. And um, whoever made that comment, uh, it's a pretty smart comment because the amount of inbound that I've received and I'm assuming Nadia has received following this announcement has been like astronomical. Uh, like everyone is, I think, starting to realize you know, the opportunity that comes with working with Maker and the positive attention that's been uh, like uh, given to Maker, like through this uh, MIP proposal is actually incredibly huge. So um, I suspect that there will be a lot of other proposals that come and find their way to the forums from other, you know, significantly prominent uh, counterparties. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a, you know, obviously we're in a bear market, <laughs> things are dark, <laughs> but uh, I think the future is still bright for, for Maker and, uh, and the Dow. So, um, yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I, actually, Tim Black and I had a conversation yesterday uh, about we're going to see a plethora of different organizations kind of putting up these uh, proposals to the community and, and you know, but there is a moment there when you kind of got to let these folks know that, come on, like stop with the 500 million debt ceiling, debt ceiling requests, right? Like, can we crawl before we walk? Um, so while, while I welcome more of the origin US dollar, you know, and by the way, I totally have forgotten about them. The last time, uh, last time I played around with oh, USD was I think 2019, but uh, good to see them alive and well and putting up proposals in the community. But I think that, you know, we need to kind of slow the roll, so to speak, and stop asking for 500 million debt ceilings, a billion. Um, you know, we got to take it easy, man, because there's a lot of risk out there, too. Well, I mean, to be clear, uh, you know, strategic finance and growth, uh, any other core, yeah, none of us are suggesting how much, you know, these counterparties should request. They're all looking at, you know, the PSM, and they all 
you know, naturally are going to be selfish and then they're acting in their own self-interest, right? Um, you know, if I was writing the proposals myself or if I was, you know, deciding uh, how these things would be allocated, um, it would definitely be at a much smaller amount. But um, this is the nature of a permissionless, you know, an open system, I think. Yeah, for sure. No, I agree. Um, and, you know, but let's let's not forget that there's still the centralized risk of playing with these um, centralized stable coins, right? So this doesn't take away from the inherent risk that the PSM brings along. So with, with the centralized party like like Circle USDC. So um, it while it's some, great. You're talking about OUSD or um, Coinbase? No, any particular centralized stable coin, it, it just doesn't take away. And this is why, you know, I'm a proponent of the end game. And when I say I, I mean 3F delegate. Uh, it's a proponent of the end game because it does allow the opportunity to hopefully, uh, and we talked about this earlier uh, in the delegate uh, office hours about swinging the pendulum away from the, the reliance of centralized stable coins and kind of get into the centralized assets like Ethereum or Stakey, um, which I look forward to personally. But you know that's that's another conversation. I'm just I'm just reminding folks that while this is great, MIP eighty one, the the Gemini proposal, et cetera, um, you know we still we still got to remember there's always risk when you are dealing with these counterparties. Appreciate that back and forth. Thanks, guys. Do you want to put a nod to the time here? Uh, we're coming up on at least 15 minutes from when we usually wrap up. Uh, so if you have some more to say about this, uh, please consider speaking. All and I want to give a very like heartfelt thanks for for trying a, a slightly new format. We'll get better at presenting it and uh, getting new questions and and ideas to talk about uh, in advance. But uh, it was really great to see so much engagement on the call today. Uh, as we talked about at the start, uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up for vote on Monday. So let's kind of keep this energy up, keep uh, the discussion going in the forums, uh, and, and do keep an eye out for this ratification cycle. Um, Coinbase will be one of the MIPs we'll have, uh, MIP82, the, uh, Alan with, with, uh, Appalusia and, and the Coinbase, uh, a different type of lending. And then of course the in-game MIPs are, are, are big there as well. So I want to say big thanks for, for everyone coming out. Uh, please do check out the forum and yeah, we'll see ya. Uh, I guess one programming note to, uh, be aware of. There's an own form of poll going on right now uh, on the Maker Forum about whether we should have a call next week or not. Uh, we noticed a slightly smaller attendance this week. Uh, suspect will be even worse next week with the conference. Uh, if people still want to have a call, well, we're happy to host one. Uh, but if we want to take a week off as well, we can. So do check the Maker Forums for that scheduling. And we'll talk to you soon. Either way. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>